On October 1st, 2019, Alpha Dream, the developer of the Mario & Luigi series, filed for bankruptcy. It's still one of my favorite JRPG series for a multitude of reasons, so I wanted to take a moment to look back at the first game in the series, Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga. First of all, it was actually the first JRPG I had ever played. When I was younger, I mostly played Nintendo and Mario games and didn't branch out much, so I basically bought Superstar Saga because I saw it was a Mario game. I didn't know it was a JRPG at the time, but I ended up loving it anyway because of how charming it was. The dialogue was really good. The story, while pretty basic, is carried by very strong writing and character interactions, and the gameplay was really good too. Regarding the story, it's a fairly basic save Princess Peach plot, but the strong writing and character development is what really makes the story shine. A lot of the characters are brand new because the game doesn't take place in the Mushroom Kingdom, it takes place in the Bean Bean Kingdom instead. So that means many of the supporting characters and villains are entirely original, and some of the returning characters like Bowser are more secondary. With Bowser in particular, he works really well as more of a comic relief villain rather than the main villain for the story, and I think the Mario & Luigi series really gets Bowser's characterization right in general, and you can really see that start in Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga. In terms of new characters, the obvious standout is Fawful, who has many memorable lines and is probably one of the most remembered parts of this game, I'd say, because of just how quirky and iconic he is. Even beyond the character moments, the story is still pretty solid. There are a few twists here and there, nothing too big or earth-shattering, but it's definitely an enjoyable story, but I don't think it would be as iconic if it wasn't for how good the writing is. In terms of gameplay, Superstar Saga does a good job of blending traditional JRPG gameplay with Mario gameplay really well. Like most JRPGs, Superstar Saga is split between overworld and battle gameplay. Exploring the overworld is fairly standard for a JRPG, but it does have a large focus on platforming as you'd expect from a Mario title. Different areas offer different challenges of how to navigate through them, and as you go along, you unlock more moves to help you get through certain areas. These include special types of jumps to clear higher ledges or get past farther gaps, or even shrinking or going underground to access hard-to-reach areas. Compared to other JRPGs of this era, one thing that makes Superstar Saga more accessible is the lack of random encounters. All enemies are visible on the field, and it's up to the player whether they want to engage in battle or not. Additionally, you can even get the drop on an enemy with a jump attack or a hammer on the field, which will do damage or stun enemies going into battle. And on the subject of battles, Superstar Saga's combat is turn-based, meaning the player chooses a command from Mario or Luigi, and then the enemy takes a turn. But like other Mario RPGs, the turn-based battles feature a timing component known as an action command. If you push the right button at the right time, you can do extra damage. There's also a special kind of attack called a bros attack, featuring both Mario and Luigi, and several inputs required to do maximum damage to an enemy. There's a bit of a risk versus reward system with bros attacks, because each attack has three difficulty levels. On the lowest difficulty level, attacks are easier to pull off, but they do a lot less damage. So it's advised to use the higher levels once you've learned the button combinations for each bros attack. Defending is also different than most JRPGs because you can dodge or counter most enemy attacks with proper timing, which provides an additional challenge beyond the usual strategizing that most JRPGs have. On the whole, I like how interactive Superstar Saga is, both in exploration and combat. As someone who grew up with the Mario series, I like the blend of exploration and platforming that you'd find from that series with traditional JRPG overworld exploration. And the action command system adds a level of skill that helps to keep battles from getting as repetitive, I find. Lastly, in addition to the original version for Game Boy Advance, Superstar Saga received a full remake in 2017 called Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga plus Bowser's Minions. 
The remake features redone visuals, audio, and gameplay, along with a new side story, Minion Quest, which I admittedly haven't played enough to properly review it. Regardless of the new content, the overall presentation and gameplay are a lot closer to the other 3DS Mario and Luigi games, which I think is an improvement for the most part. In some ways I found the remake easier, but since attack and defense timings are a bit different, and enemy stats are rebalanced around the updated gameplay, it was still fairly challenging as someone who has played the original many times. Even though I think the original holds up really well, the remake is a faithful update that I think is worth checking out for fans and new players alike. If you don't have a 3DS but have a way to play the original, that version is still worth playing though. Either way, I wholeheartedly recommend Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga. The story is charming and fun, the gameplay is really solid. While I haven't talked about the presentation very much, the music and graphics are still pretty good for the time, and the 3DS version, in my opinion, only improves them. So if you haven't played Superstar Saga in any capacity, either version is still really good. And even with Alpha Dream shutting down, I hope someday we can see more games from this series. And even if this is it for the series, I hope people continue playing these games and enjoying them. 